Welcome back to A20. In this section and the following ones, we talk about paradoxes in special relativity. A paradox is something which is absurd, absurd or self-contradictory. Uh, so we have statements which don't really make any sense when brought uh, together. Um, the pole in the barn paradox is, is rather interesting and we will analyze this and at the end of the discussion we we'll hopefully agree that there is no paradox here, the pseudo paradox. Okay, so the situation is as follows. We have Alice, she has a pole. The pole is 10 meters long in her reference frame. And Bob is very proud of his New England barn, which is in his reference frame, eight meters long. Alice, however, is moving with a velocity of 0.6 times the speed of light, which gives us a gamma factor of 1.25. Does the pole fit into the barn is a question or not? So I'll stop here and think about this for a second and we will continue with an anal analysis of this. So here is the analysis for Alice's frame and the analysis for Bob's frame. For Alice, the barn in her reference frame is Lorentz contracted. It's 6.4 meters long, while her pole is 10 meters long. So we should clearly answer this question by saying, it doesn't fit. In Bob's frame, the barn is eight meters long and the pole is Lawrence contracted, also eight meters long. So Bob will say, yeah, it fits. It just barely fits. They're exactly the same size. So yes, the pole fits into the barn. And here is where you might think this is an absurd statement. They cannot be both right. We will see they can. They can both be right. They just disagree on the fact that events happen simultaneously. What are the crucial events here? When does the barn hit the end, as if the pole hits the end of the barn? And when does the back of the pole hit the front of the barn? Those are the two things we have to uh, study in detail. So let's get to it. How can they or why can they disagree? So the idea is that you draw space-time diagrams uh, for the pole in the barn and show that there's no paradox um, by using the word lines of the pole. Before we do this, we want to analyze this a little bit more. So assume that the front of the pole enters the barn at time equal zero for both Bob and Alice. Then Bob observes the pole entering his barn and it takes 44.4 nanoseconds eight meters divided by 0.6 times the speed of light for the front of the pole to reach the back of the barn and the back of the pole to reach the front of the barn. So after 44 nanoseconds in Bob's reference frame, the pole is in the barn. Alice, however, sees the barn Lawrence contracted. It's 6.4 meters long she moves with 0.6 times the speed of light. So for her, she reaches the back after 35.6 nanoseconds. In which case, Bob's clock only shows 28.4 nanoseconds because Alice's clock time is, is Lorentz contract. So we can clearly conclude here that that's not enough time for Bob such that the, the pole actually enters the barn full, with full length. So the back of the pole is still outside. So we want to consider three different events. The first event is after 44 nanoseconds and at a space of eight meters in Bob's reference frame, for Alice, this is the situation we just analyzed, 36.6, 35.6 nanoseconds passed. Um, and in her reference frame, the front of the pole is at zero meters. The second event is then the other side of the barn. In Bob's reference frame, after 44.4 nanoseconds, zero meters, he sees, or she sees, that 55 nanoseconds have passed. We use Lorentz transformation here. Um, but the position is minus 10 meters. OK. And the last point is 28.4 nanoseconds in zero meters. That is the observation when Alice sees the end of the front of the barn, the front of the pole at the end of the barn. Um, that translates into Alice's frame at 35.6 nanoseconds and minus 6.4 meters. So 
For the minus 6.4 meters, tell you very clearly what we just already said, the back of the pole is still outside. Okay, so that's the quantitative or numerical kind of evaluation. Um, and we can also show the very same thing in the space-time diagram. So we show the space-time diagram here, and um, this is Bob's reference frame. The pole just touched the front of this barn. Um, the barn is located at eight meters. The end of the barn is located at eight meters. The front of the barn is located at zero meters. After 44 nanoseconds, there's event number one and event number two. The pole is fully in the barn. But we can also show the pole of this event number three. So one, where is the end of the pole? Let me look at this diagram here. Where is the end of the pole when the front of the pole hits the end of the barn? You see clearly there's a piece mist sticking out. We saw that there's um, in this event here, 6.6 .6 meters in Alice's frame still sticking out. So we see that event number three is located here and uh, not all, the, all of the pole is actually contained within the barn. So Bob and Alice disagree on whether the front and the back of the pole are in the, in the barn simultaneously. That's where the situation becomes uh, contradictory. They don't agree that two events which happen at the same time in their reference frame, in Bob's reference frame, occur at the same time in Alice's reference frame. 